How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this video we're going to be covering the optimization guide and best settings for Hogwarts Legacy. In this video we're going to be aiming to give you the best FPS possible whilst maintaining a good level of visual fidelity so the game still looks fantastic, solve most of the stuttering issues with inside of the game, leaving you with a smooth, responsive and fluid feeling game. Regardless if you're running on a desktop or a laptop, whether your system is ultra high end and brand new or a few years old and relatively low end, in this video we'll be going over settings in which you should apply for your system and how to adjust those settings to ensure that you get the best gameplay experience for yourself and your system. With all of that and more coming after a short message from today's video sponsor, Gamer Subs is a keto-friendly, zero-calorie, zero-sugar, healthier energy drink replacement offering organic caffeine, electrolytes, six crucial vitamins and minerals, and nootropics to sharpen focus and decrease reaction time. And if you don't fancy the caffeine, caffeine-free versions of most Gamer Subs flavors are available in 120 serving tubs. Gamer Subs is a powdered energy formula that delivers long-lasting energy, increased endurance, faster reflexes, and comes in at a fraction of the cost of a canned energy drink. With 100 servings per tub, averaging 35 cents per serving, with countless flavors, shakers, and accessories to choose from, it's time to ditch the big brand energy drink companies, ditch the extra sugar, extra calories, and all of the nonsense, and opt for cleaner, cheaper, and more diverse energy lineup. If you're not sure where to start, Gamer Subs are offering an exclusive free Gamer Subs samples pack featuring three flavors with two servings in each pack, equaling six free drinks using the link in the description down below. Click on the link, hit add to cart, you won't have to pay any shipping and you'll have samples arrive to your door completely free of charge so you can try before you buy. If you like the product, consider supporting the channel today using code PANGINO at checkout for 10% off or alternatively using the link in the description down below. And a massive thanks to Gamer Subs for sponsoring today's video. To kick off the optimizations, whether you're using Windows 10 or 11, we're first of all going to jump into some really basic Windows settings to ensure that the game has access to all of the resources possible on your system. First of all, navigate down to the bottom left hand side, click your Windows button, and type GPU space settings. Head to the graphics settings panel. In Windows 10, this can look slightly different. Navigate over to change default graphics settings with inside of here. On Windows 11, you should have the option for optimizations for windowed games, and I would highly recommend enabling this option, as Hogwarts Legacy is a DirectX 12 exclusive title, meaning that it's constantly going to be running any windowed mode, whether that be windowed or windowed borderless, so this optimization should help. For those of you with NVIDIA GPUs, you should see an option titled Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. If you don't see the option, that's completely fine, it's more than likely not supported on your system, turn this on. For a few advanced optimizations, for those of you with a little bit more time on your hands, I would first of all look to set up G-Sync or FreeSync, depending on what's available for your monitor, GPU and PC. It's fantastic to use on slower games such as Hogwarts Legacy, where FPS can fluctuate quite a bit and you'll typically be running higher settings than you would on a competitive game. When setting up G-Sync or FreeSync, make sure that you do cap your in-game FPS to 3 FPS lower than your monitor's maximum refresh rate. For most of you, that will be 144Hz monitors, so you'll cap your FPS to 141. Ensure that V-Sync has been turned on in either your NVIDIA Control Panel or AMD Radeon Panel, and V-Sync has been switched off in-game for the best results. For those of you on NVIDIA GPUs and somewhat modern PCs, you could actually look to force resizable bar in Hogwarts Legacy for NVIDIA GPUs. This is relatively simple and easy to do, and I'll have a video linked down below which will show you in depth how to achieve this in a couple of minutes. All you need to do is make sure that resizable bar has been enabled on your motherboard's BIOS, if available, downloading and utilizing the NVIDIA Profile Inspector tool to then force resizable bar on for Hogwarts Legacy and any other games on your PC. When playing single player games, especially where settings are usually quite high and you're playing on higher resolutions, GPU load is typically high. With higher GPU load comes higher temperatures. To combat this, I would 100% recommend applying a custom GPU fan curve to ensure that you can set your GPU fans as high as possible for your personal preference to ensure that your GPU remains remains cool throughout longer gaming sessions will lead to higher boost clocks for your GPU, equaling better performance for longer. If you're looking to dive deeper in lowering your GPU temperatures, you could also look into applying a GPU undervolt, and there will be a guide for this coming to the channel very soon, could already be out, so make sure that you do check out the videos linked in the description down below for that. For those of you looking to get the absolute best FPS possible, there is an advanced FPS guide in which you can follow along with, which you can find on screen now, and linked in the description down below. Inside that video, we cover advanced FPS optimizations in which you can apply to Windows, games, and other settings in which you can apply to your GPU and CPU to get the absolute best out of your system. All of the in-game settings we're about to cover will apply to all of you watching this video, whether you're on a desktop, laptop, high-end or low-end system. Press escape, go to the bottom right-hand side to the settings menu. We can start off with the display options on the left-hand side. Make sure that window full screen has been selected, then navigate down to your upscale type, which will be the first main setting we're setting up in this video. If you do have an NVIDIA RTX based GPU and you can select NVIDIA DLSS, do this. With DLSS selected, navigate down and utilize DLSS Auto. 
workflow. This does a fantastic job of detecting the resolution in which you're currently rendering the game at and your GPU and setting the option which best fits you for the performance in which you're looking for. I would also recommend setting the upscale sharpness down to zero. It slightly softens the image, but in my opinion, adds to the aesthetic of the game and leads to a better looking image afterwards. If you're on a GPU which does not support NVIDIA DLSS, well, the option we're going to be going with then is AMD FSR 2.0. With AMD FSR selected, go down to the upscaling mode, but most of you watching start off by utilizing balanced. Navigate down to the upscale sharpness. This is personal preference, but I like to set this down to zero. At 4K, I'm happy to go all the way down to FSR 2 performance, so that's the setting I'll be going with. With that set up, go ahead and press escape and go back to your game. Whether you're utilizing AMD FSR 2 or DLSS at this point, don't pay too much attention to the overall FPS of the game. We're only going to be paying attention to how the game looks. If you are happy with how the upscale scaling tech looks on your system, fantastic. If it's too blurry, try adjusting the FSR setting or DLSS option to one higher than what it's currently set to. If you're really happy with how the game looks still, you could potentially even lower the AMD FSR setting you're using to something even lower. I'm going to be sticking with DLSS Auto. With that then selected, navigate down to Frame Generation. If you're on a system that supports this and you can change this setting to On, do it regardless of anything. It will instantly give you a 2 times FPS increase due to the way the technology works via frame insertion every other frame. So if you're playing the game currently at 60 FPS, if you enable this setting, you'll be getting 120 FPS instantly. It won't do anything in terms of improving system latency, but on a single player title like this, the overall perceived smoothness is going to be increased drastically, leading to a much better feeling game. To quickly test and see if you can enable this setting on your GPU, even if it's grayed out, head into your Windows settings, search for GPU space settings. You should then see the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If you see that option, make sure it's switched to the on position. If you've switched it on now, restart the system, restart the game, jump back into this setting. If the frame generation mode is then available, Available, turn this on immediately regardless of anything. Next up is NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. If you're on an RTX based GPU, go with on. If you're on a GTX based system, go with on plus boost. VSync I'd recommend switching off in this game as it can introduce further stuttering with inside of the game and it's not recommended. If you want a smoother experience, utilize G-Sync or FreeSync alongside an FPS cap. I would highly recommend not utilizing the FPS cap built with inside of the game. I would only use this as a last resort. If you don't want to cap your FPS utilizing the NVIDIA control panel or AMD Radeon panel, by all means, set an FPS cap with inside of it, and I'd recommend capping to your monitor's maximum refresh rate. So at 144 hertz, go with 144 frames per second. If your system supports HDR, I would 100% recommend enabling this, going into the image calibration mode and running through those sliders, as it will greatly add to the overall experience, and it will only cost you a couple of frames at most. Field of view is completely personal preference. Motion blur, I would wouldn't usually recommend turning this on, but I find it's great here. If you don't want it on though, turn it off. Depth of field, again, I would recommend having on to add to the overall experience, but if you would like a sharper looking game, go with off. Chromatic aberration, again, adds to the overall aesthetic. Turn this off if you want a sharper looking game, and I would always recommend switching film grain off. Make sure that your main GPU has been selected at the bottom. You won't notice a massive difference in overall FPS at this point, as we haven't gone through the main settings, but just make sure that you are happy with the visual fidelity of the game currently. If you're happy, fantastic. If you're not, jump back into those settings fiddle around with the motion blur, depth of field, and get those settings where you want them. This time, navigate down to the actual in-game graphics options. By default, the recommended settings are going to be enabled for your GPU. Unfortunately, though, this doesn't seem to take into account the resolution in which you're playing at. For the most part, the in-game settings in this game are fantastic. You aren't actually going to miss out on much visual fidelity going to the lowest graphics preset compared to Ultra. For nearly every single person watching this video, for the quickest and easiest in-game settings, take this slider, set this to medium, go to the bottom right, and apply those settings. For those of you on quite old systems or very low end systems that are struggling at this point, I would 100% recommend going with the low preset and sticking with the low settings. But there is a few settings in which I would adjust inside of the medium preset, depending if you're on a medium end system all the way up to an ultra high end system, scroll down to texture quality. If you're on a medium end system, stick this to medium or potentially even low. If you're on a high end system to ultra high end, go with high. What you then want to do is match your population quality to match the texture setting in which you just set. So for me, that's high. Last but not least, I'd navigate over to shadows. I'm going to be keeping mine at medium as these are quite taxing on performance, but you could set these to match your texture setting of low or high, depending on the sort of system in which you are running on. We then have our ray tracing options. By all means, if you want the best performance inside of this game, I would 100% recommend giving up ray tracing altogether and switching all of these settings off. The FPS boost from this is absolutely massive, and I would argue that you would get a better gameplay experience from the overall smoothness of having this turned off than having this enabled. But if you are someone that definitely wants to jump into ray tracing and enable the tech, these are the options in which I would go with if your GPU does support ray tracing. 
First of all, enable ray traced reflections, disable ray traced shadows, and disable ambient occlusion. If you want to go for high end ray tracing settings, you could also enable the shadows, but they do take away a lot from FPS, and the ray tracing reflections don't tax performance too heavily. I would then recommend setting your ray tracing quality up to ultra if you are utilizing any ray tracing settings. Otherwise, even if you're on a 4090 with frame generation enabled, if you just want the highest FPS possible, I would give up ray tracing and turn all options off. Once completed, go to the bottom right to apply settings. If you've adjusted ray tracing settings you will need to restart your game so press spacebar to accept make sure that you do have any applications closed such as google chrome everything that is not 100 necessary to have open on your system don't have it open if you're still looking to get better fps past this point i would 100 recommend navigating back to the graphics preset section all of your settings which are currently set to medium switch these down to low apply those settings jump back into the game and see how your performance is if you're still looking for more fps take yourself over to the display options navigating down to your upscaling mode and try lowering this setting to something even lower until you find that fine balance of performance for your system and visual fidelity. So to go over everything for my system and what I would recommend for most people, even if you're not planning on playing at 4K or you have a higher end system than me, I'm going to be utilizing NVIDIA DLSS at auto. 0% sharpness, reflex on, vSync off, frame rate uncapped, but capped at 141 FPS utilizing my NVIDIA control panel. Field of view standard, motion blur on, depth of field on, chromatic aberration on, film grain off. My preset has been set to medium, and I've then customized the texture quality to high, population quality to high. Me personally, I'm actually going to be switching ray tracing off. For those of you looking to make use of NVIDIA DLSS, there is one very important step you need to look to apply. The game has launched with a slightly older version of DLSS, version 2.3. DLSS 2.5.1 is actually available, and we can manually swap over that file within about 20 seconds for improvements to overall game stuttering, improvements to the visual fidelity of DLSS, and performance improvements in general. Navigate inside of the description down below to the techpowerup.com DLSS link. Alternatively, you can just Google this. Depending on when you're watching this video and when the video comes live, there could be even newer versions available. So what I would recommend doing is downloading the latest version at the top of your screen, regardless of which version it is at the time of you watching this video. Scroll down, select the nearest server to you, open up the zip folder, and it should look very similar to this. Minimize the web browser, drag this folder over to the side. Go to Steam, Epic, or wherever your game is installed. Right click on the game inside of Steam, head to Properties, Local Files, Browse. Go inside of Engine, Plugins, Runtime, NVIDIA, DLSS, Binaries, Third Party, Win64. Go over to the right hand side to the zip folder for the latest version of DLSS you downloaded, drag it into the game's version and replace the file in this destination. Go back to the game launcher and hit play. For a few bonus optimizations in which you can test out quickly and easily to help prevent some of the stuttering issues with inside of the game, first up what we can do is take ourselves to the bottom left hand side, type exploit space protection, enter the system settings, navigate over to the program settings, then select add a program to customize. Navigate down to choose exact file path. Inside of this section, you need to navigate to where Hogwarts Legacy has been installed. Once selected, navigate down to hogwartslegacy.exe, then select open. What we then need to do is scroll down towards the middle section where we'll be able to find control, flow, guard, or CFG. Select the option to override system settings for this, and we're then going to turn this off. Once that's been completed, go to the bottom to apply. That will disable core integrity constantly scanning hogwartslegacy.exe when it's running. This is typically an issue with DirectX 12 titles, so if you do experience any stutter or slowdowns on other DirectX titles, definitely give that optimization a go. Another application fix in which we can utilize is to navigate down to Hogwarts Legacy inside of Steam or any launcher. Go to the file directory for this by going to Browse, Local Files, Browse. Find Hogwarts.exe, right click, navigate down to Properties, Matability, disable the full screen optimizations, navigate down to change our DPI and override the high DPI scaling behavior, select OK, apply and OK. For those of you on an NVIDIA graphics card, you could also experiment around with increasing the shader cache size for the GPU, head inside of the NVIDIA control panel, navigate up to the adjust image settings with preview, ensure the middle option has been selected, then go down to apply. Then go to the left hand side to manage 3D settings, scroll down you find shader cache size and experiment around with increasing this from either default all the way up to 100 gigabytes or potentially unlimited. This could take up more space on your local disk C drives to make sure that you do have enough space on your C drive, or if you notice that your C drive is getting quite large, you might want to decrease the shader cache size, but this could be helpful for Hogwarts Legacy and potentially solving some of the stuttering issues you're experiencing. Last but not least, for an experimental fix and performance uplift, we can add in additional lines into our game config files to help the game potentially run smoother. If you would like to experiment around with this, take yourself to the bottom left hand side, search for percent, app data, percent, then press enter. 
Go to the top to the navigation bar, select App Data, then go to Local, scroll down to the H section and find Hogwarts Legacy. Once inside of the main folder, go to Saved, Config, Windows No Editor. Find Engine.ini and double click. What you then need to do is scroll down to the bottom, where it should end with Paths. In the description down below, there'll be a paste bin link in which you can simply right click all of the information with inside of the paste bin. Once you've copied all of that, come to the bottom line of your Engine.ini, then just simply press Control and V or right click and paste this in. Once completed, go to the top left to File, Save. If at any point you would like to take those optimizations out to the engine.ini and restore it back, all you need to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom of the file, scroll all the way up to where it says paths equals and everything underneath this just simply remove. And there you guys have it. If you have enjoyed this video, please do consider leaving a like and let me know of your results down in the comment section down below and the graphics presets and specs in which you are using. If you have enjoyed this content, consider checking out the two videos on screen now for further FPS optimizations to your PC and I'll see you over there.